So patterns of neonatal sepsis, we can categorize sepsis depending on the timing into early onset sepsis, where uh, it's usually onset less than or equal to five days of age. Some definitions go up to seven days. Usually there is a maternal source of infection and group B streptococcus is a predominant cause. There is a high mortality rate of five to 50%. The main presentation is as respiratory distress and it can be rapidly fulminant. So the screening protocols, the maternal prophylaxis are all targeting a group B streptococcus in majority of the cases. Now in premature babies, you may have uh, ESBL, E. coli and other organisms as well causing fulminant infection. So risk factors for early onset sepsis include prematurity, maternal fever or chorea neonatus. Uh, there is a lot of interest in reducing unnecessary use of antibiotics in babies by over-diagnosing chorea So we have the triple I uh, and the sepsis score, uh, which can be done online, uh, sepsis risk score. And uh, we can reduce the use of antibiotics by scoring the risk factors. So group B streptococcus colonization, bacteria, previous affected baby with sepsis, these are all risk factors as well, uh, PROM and uh, male gender. Late onset sepsis where the onset is more than five days of age and it's usually acquired from the environment. In a hospitalized preterm baby, it's usually nosocomial and you may have resistant bugs. And in term babies, it's usually community acquired. Uh, there is a lesser focus on respiratory presentation and meningitis has a higher risk up to 30%. So if yeah, there is a late onset sepsis, it's uh, safer to do the lumbar puncture, it's recommended. Organism, uh, maybe E. coli, different serotypes of group B streptococcus, coagulase negative staph more in hospitalized patients and staph for the sepsis, and lower mortality 